Hi, good afternoon everybody. My name is Claire Bannerman and I am the roving chef for Scotland for Vegetarian for Life. So thanks for joining me this afternoon for um, our final session, which is session six from the Growing Together project. So today we're going to be doing a simple vegetable and tofu stir fry and that will be followed by a chocolate mug cake. So we'll start off with our spring onions. So I've got two large spring onions. I'm just going to top and tail these. And then I'm going to cut these on the diagonal angle. It just makes them look a bit nicer in the dish. So just chopping them on that slant. So you can see there that I've cut these on the angle so they've got the, the slant cut there. So I'm going to cook um, my dish in a frying pan today just so that you guys can see in the pan so you can see what's going on better. Of course you could do this in a normal pan or a wok. So I'm going to take a little bit of oil into my pan and then go ahead and add my sliced spring onions. So my next ingredient is garlic. So you guys that have joined me in previous sessions will know that I like to use large garlic. So it's not the actual bulb that's large, it's the individual cloves. So the recipe calls for one clove, but I like mine really garlicky, so I'm going to use two today. So the easiest way to get into your garlic is just to lean on it, put your weight behind it, and that will pop open your garlic. Then you can see the size of these cloves are really big, big fat juicy cloves ideal for cooking with. So then to get into the individual cloves I'm going to take the flat off my chef's knife and just lean on the, the clove and then just chop in and your skin should just peel off easily. So if you ever do get a garlic where the skin won't peel off just pop it in some hot water for a few minutes and that will loosen off the skin. So as I've mentioned in previous sessions, my mum's got really bad arthritis and she finds peeling and chopping ginger and garlic quite difficult. So she uses a lazy garlic, it'd be absolutely fine to do that. So what I like to do to get a nice fine mince, if I, I don't actually have a garlic crusher, I use the fine side of my grater. So make sure you don't use the zest inside because your garlic and ginger, excuse me, would just stick to this. So I'm going to use the fine side. Go ahead and grate down that garlic. So the great thing with stir fry is you can really use anything you like and it's great for using up leftovers. So you can mix and match the vegetables that you, you use. So the onions are sizzling away nicely, they've got a nice bit of colour on them. So I can turn down my heat slightly. And then I can add in that lovely grated garlic. So you can hear it's really simple on the way so a nice medium to high heat. Get that frying off. So if you were using the lazy garlic, I would use about a teaspoon here. So you can find that in most supermarkets, it normally comes in a jar or a little chip. So my next ingredient is fresh ginger. Widely available in most supermarkets as is the lazy ginger which you will also find in a tube or a little jar. So I like to use my speed peeler to take off the skin. But a good tip that my Indian chef friend gave me is if you don't have a speed peeler you can just use a teaspoon to scrape off that skin. That works equally well. But today I'm going to use my speed peeler. So just removing that outer skin. So again I'm going to grate this. I find if you chop ginger sometimes it can be a little bit fibrous. And by grating it down you release all those lovely essential oils and flavours. So again on the fine side of my grater. I'll go ahead and grate down that lovely ginger. 
So if you have leftover ginger and makes a lovely cup of tea, you can add some slices to some boiling water, perhaps add a little bit of cinnamon and honey, it makes a really refreshing drink. Great for keeping away colds and flus. So pop in that ginger now. you really release all these lovely flavours from the garlic it's getting a little bit of colour now so keep that moving about garlic can burn quite easy so we want to keep that moving about at this stage and we're just warming through that ginger so my spring onions have taken a little bit of caramelisation they'll be releasing their flavours as well so today I'm using tofu um, so the tofu that I'm using is firm tofu um, the soft tofu which is found in the, the world food section is more suitable for um, desserts and smoothies and sauces. The tofu that I've used is the firm tofu. So this comes in a block and you'll find it in the chill cabinet next to your other um, meat free products. So what I've done with this block is I've finely diced it and I've squeezed out any excess liquid. Then just for a little bit extra flavour. I've marinated it for about half an hour with a little bit of soy sauce, a small splash of oil and then a little bit of Chinese five spice. So if you fancy the spicy version, you could use chilli powder, really whatever spices you like. So we can add that tofu directly into the pan now. And we just want to get that sizzling away just so that the tofu crisps up. You'll really smell that lovely ginger and garlic starting to come through now. It smells fantastic. So that's softening off my next ingredient is pepper. Um, so you guys that have joined my sessions previously and uh, you'll know that I've been um, babysitting for my nieces and this is something that my niece taught me. You get male and female peppers. If your pepper has four bumps it's female and it's good to know that because female peppers are sweeter. So ideal for dishes that cook quickly, like stir fries and fajitas. So what a lot of people do with their pepper is they just chop off the top. That way you've just got a bit of food waste. So what I like to do is pop my pepper. So I just lean on the pepper, put my weight behind it, and then just pull it open. And that way, all your seeds will come out in one go. So I'm just going to roughly slice down my peppers. It's up to yourself how chunky or fine you like this. If you want to use mixed peppers, all the different colours, feel free to do that. It's up to yourself. So I'm just roughly chopping this down. So at this stage I'm just going to take out the tofu and onion mix and just pop it in a bowl and set to the side. And we'll come back to that. So I'm just going to add another small splash of oil to my pan. And I can go ahead and add my pepper. Get that threatened out. So my next ingredient is chestnut mushrooms. I like to use chestnut mushrooms because I think they've got a bit more flavour compared to white mushrooms. And the good thing about the chestnut mushrooms is they're rich in vitamin D. So vitamin D is a vitamin that you normally get from the sunlight in the summer which is absorbed through your skin. But mushrooms are rich in vitamin D from the chestnut variety. And the good thing about that is it boosts your overall um, immunity and bone health. And current research is showing that a diet that is rich in vitamin D that actually reduces your risk of COVID. So that's something that's worth well known. Go ahead and roughly chop these. So it's up to yourself how chunky or fine you like to chop your mushrooms. There's no need to peel or wash mushrooms. If you find that there's a little bit off the grow medium on your mushroom, just wipe it off with a little bit of damp paper towel. If you do wash your mushrooms, they tend to absorb all that water and go a bit soggy. So of course, if you didn't have chestnut mushrooms, field mushrooms, or if you um, could get oriental mushrooms like shiitake, of course that would be absolutely lovely to use in this dish too. So 
we'll go ahead and add these to the pan along with our pepper and we'll just get them softening off. So this dish works really well with stir fry rice and um, today I'm going to use noodles. If you are using stir fry rice I would recommend um, using rice that has been pre-cooked and then it's cool so that it, it doesn't stick to your pan when you start to stir fry it. So we'll let that soften off. So my next ingredient is bean sprouts. So I'm just using a packet. Um, I tend to find that the fresh ones are, are better and you'll find this beside your salad ingredients in most supermarkets. And we can go ahead and add a handful there. This is a super quick dish to do. So this is a perfect for using up leftovers or any other vegetables that you like. So things like green beans, monge too, baby corn or even little broccoli um, florets that would work well if you wanted to add more green veg. Or even just some sweet corn from a can or some frozen sweet corn to add a little pop of yellow. So the mistake that a lot of people do when they do stir fry is that they tend to overcook the vegetables and they make them a bit soft. So we're literally just frying this off for a few moments. So as I mentioned, I'm using noodles. So the noodles that I'm using today are popular in Japanese cooking. These are called udon noodles and they're nice and thick. So I'm going to go ahead and add these to the pan. So we're just warming this all through now. So to add a bit of seasoning, I'm going to use soy sauce. So you get dark soy sauce and light soy sauce, but bear in mind soy sauce is quite high in salt. So if you are keeping an eye on your salt level, I would recommend that you use reduced sodium um, soy sauce that you will find in most supermarkets as well. So there's no need to add any extra salt. We'll get all our seasoning from our soy sauce. Add a splash. Then I can go ahead and add my tofu mix back in. Let that all combine. So this recipe in the website, it says it's for, for one. So that'll give you a really large portion. Um, it would probably do two people um, for a, a lunch dish. And we'll just let that warm through. So that's us, it's such a super simple dish, so we can go ahead and serve that up now. So there we have it, that is my super simple stir fry noodles made with vegetables and tofu. So now we'll go on to our dessert. So today I'm going to do a chocolate cake and it's actually cooked in the microwave and this will serve one. So it's a really great recipe if you live on your own and it literally takes minutes to cook. So perhaps at night you're, you're craving a little sweet treat. This is absolutely perfect. So we're going to cook this in a mug. So make sure you've got quite a large mug and do make sure it's suitable for use in the microwave. You don't want any glittery or gold pieces on your mug. So use quite a, a large mug. So to start off with, I have 65 mils of plant-based milk. If you're not doing a vegan version, you can just use ordinary milk for this. That would be absolutely fine too. So I'm going to take um, two tablespoons of vegetable oil and add that to my milk. Give that a bit of a mix. And then we're going to combine our dry ingredients. So you can do this in a separate bowl. I find it just as easy just to do it directly into the mug. 
So I've got some um, white castor sugar, granulated would work fine for this, and we're going to take two tablespoons. If you like it sweeter, you, you could add extra sugar, but I'm just going to go for two today. Then a pinch of salt. Quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. And then I've got some cocoa powder. Um, so I'm just using supermarket own brand here. Um, um, you could use Bourneville, but if you are buying the cocoa powder, make sure that it's not drinking chocolate that you're using. Um, that wouldn't really work for this recipe. So this gives a nice deep chocolatey flavour. So this is just pure cocoa powder. And we're going to add two tablespoons of cocoa powder. So this is the dry ingredients going in separate from the, the wet. And then I've got some plain flour, so make sure that you use plain flour. If you use self-raising flour, you'll find that your cake might overflow in the, the microwave. So I'll pre weigh that, we'll go ahead and mix that together. So that's 34 grams of plain flour, 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder, quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, two tablespoons of sugar, pinch of salt, and then I can go ahead and I can combine the wet ingredients now to the dry. So that is my um, 65 mils of um, milk, so it could be almond milk, soy milk, oat milk, um, or just um, normal milk, whatever you prefer. And I've added the, the two tablespoons of oil to that, so we'll go ahead and combine that. So as I said, you want to have a mug that you've got a good head space on to make sure that it won't overflow in the microwave. So I find it mixes well with a fork, and that way you can make sure that you get all the flour at the bottom. So it'll give it a nice thick cake batter. And then it's up to yourself. Um, what inclusion you want to add here. So you could add a, a tablespoon of um, Nutella. You can also get dairy free options of chocolate spread from most supermarkets. Um, you can use chocolate chips. So if you are doing the vegan option, make sure that your chocolate chips are dairy free. So I'm going to go ahead and add a tablespoon. So if you are adding your chocolate chips, you don't need to mix them through. When they cook in the microwave, it'll, it'll settle down. So we're going to cook this for about one and a half minutes. Does so say I work for Vegetarian for Life and we're a national charity and we have our own website which is vegetarianforlife.org.uk. We have lots of free resources so a good one to start you off is Cooking for One. Lots of simple recipe ideas in here and some hints and tips. We also have our vegan rescue pack, so this gives you loads of information on a vegan diet, what a vegan will eat, but more importantly what they won't eat. People often say to me when I try to become vegan, Claire, I seem to be eating the same things all the time, so loads of good recipes and tips in here, but there's also menu planners. So we'll just check on our cake now, it's been going for about a minute, and it's just starting to rise up, so that's looking good. So we'll let that go for about another 30 seconds. So if you are interested in baking and you want to try out some more adventurous bakes, we also have our vegan baking guide. It gives you loads of detailed information on alternatives to egg and dairy that you would normally associate with cakes. There's also some savoury bakes and pastries in here. I absolutely love the banana bread, it is so simple to do and more recently I've been doing the chocolate brownies and Victoria sponge and I can assure you they're an absolute crowd pleaser. So please feel free to download any of our publications from our website, they're all free of charge to download, uh, however if you require a hard copy of the vegan baking guide there is a small charge of £2 for that. So that is our cake done. So I'm just going to let this cool just for a moment or two just before we go ahead to serve that. So as I said we've got our, our website where you can find all those publications and um, more details of recipes. 
So a little bit extra information about the services that we offer. Um, we have a virtual lunch club which runs once a month. Full details of that can be found on our Facebook page. So our Facebook page is B for Life. You'll find other um, details of other schemes that we have. We have um, information on veggie meals to your door. The lunch club as I mentioned. So at the moment our lunch club is virtual so you can join via Zoom and meet like-minded people and share a delicious lunch. So each month the lunch club will have a different theme. So the lunch club that is coming up um, this April on the 27th the theme is afternoon tea. We also have our pen pal scheme, so if you're looking to um, make some new friends, particularly good during lockdown if you're feeling a little bit isolated and lonely, we have our free pen pal scheme. We also have our grant scheme, so if you're vegetarian or vegan and you feel that you require some additional um, financial support, please check out our grant scheme. We fund things like cooking equipment, mobility aids, um, internet access, um, tablets, that kind of thing, uh, anything that would help you maintain your vegetarian or vegan lifestyle. So I'll go ahead and show you the cake now. So the chocolate chips have all melted in and you can see it's giving you this beautiful warm chocolate cake. It's beautifully moist and all those chocolate chips start to melt through. It's absolutely delicious, served on its own, or you could serve it with some vegan custard or vegan ice cream, or perhaps you would like to um, try some vegan cream. So if you check out our website, we have um, recipes for um, alternatives to cream, such as our cashew nut cream. So it's been an absolute pleasure to cook for you guys over the last six weeks. So I really hope you've enjoyed these um, short demonstrations. So just to recap, that is my um, tofu and vegetable noodle stir fry accompanied by my chocolate mug cake so I think I'm going to go and enjoy this with a cup of tea now so as I say it's been fantastic um, to cook for you guys um, over the last six weeks please feel free to send us any um, pictures um, of anything that you've tried to cook if you have any questions on the sessions please feel free to contact us um, on our Facebook page or to drop me an email so my email is claire at vegetarianforlife.org.uk So thank you so much everybody, please stay safe and well, bye now.